Howdy folks, uh, Doug the old orange beastie out of storage, ready, uh, getting ready for winter here. Filled it with fresh fuel, started it up, it's running really rough. It's, it's actually running lean and I'll demo that right now. So we've got the surging. I'll give it some choke. I'll give it choke, the surging goes away. So this particular snowblower is a uh, Husqvarna, I believe the model number is 227P. If you've got uh, a snowblower, a more recent model, uh, there's a good chance it uses the same engine. Um, the engine for these, uh, manufactured by a company called LCT, sorry, Liquid Combustion Technology. They're a, uh, I believe they're a Chinese engine manufacturer, but um, very popular now on all the major brands. Troy built, Craftsman, Poulon, um, the uh, flavor of the year at Costco, most likely. Anyways, um, like most new engines, uh, they don't have needle valves that you can adjust for a lean running condition. And as you saw, it was doing that surging, and when I gave it a little bit of choke, the, uh, the surging went away, and that's or indicative of a uh, lean running engine, if you've got the same kind of thing. I noticed this was already running lean last year. Uh, it wasn't bad, but now it's even worse. So my guess is there's probably the the jet is probably getting clogged. Like I said, you cannot adjust. They don't. The carburetors don't have needle valves anymore. Uh, they've got fixed jet carburetors. And you know, the cynical side of me says, well, that's so no you know homer owner can do their own work on them but it's more likely due to EPA regulations. Um, they generally set them lean. I had actually done a video on a surging riding mower here uh, this summer. Seems to be the year of surging engines for me. Uh, that had nothing to do with lean running, but some people were, were having the same issue on those. And one of the comments was to drill out the needle valve, which is a common fix, but hopefully we won't have to do that. Anyways, to get to these things, um, yeah, they're, they're not easy to get to the carburetor. You've got to take a bunch of stuff off. So the first thing you've got to do is take the heat uh, shroud off the exhaust. There's four bolts, two on the front and two on the back. Just fast forward through this. Okay, so we've got that off. I guess if you want to be safe, you can pull the uh, spark plug boot off. Now we've got to take um, this cover off. Uh, I've got to take these knobs off. They just slide out. So again on this we've got uh, four bolts here and here. Fast forward through this. Okay, sorry about the compressor running. Uh, these are the four bolts that I just took out of this cover. There's two shorter ones. They're slightly shorter. I don't know if that's picking it up. Focus. Anyways, these two shorter ones are the ones that go down just above the primer bulb. And the longer ones go in the back side. So just uh, make a note of that when you take this thing off. The uh, ones, the four for the uh, exhaust or the muffler um, exhaust cover, they're all the same length. So, but they are different from these as well. So just make sure you keep them all separate. Now, this thing is there's a this little primer bulb it has a hose that goes up to the carb that you've got to slip off. That's it right there, and then there's four sets of wires. There's four wires, two to the on and off switch, two to this uh, key switch. Uh, these, the wiring is hooked up in parallel. Uh, regardless, if you turn this off or if this comes out, uh, it shorts the ignition coil uh, to ground and that's what uh, kills the spark. So I'm just going to pause it while I get these wires off. So I've got them all off. This, the, this one, it pulled the contact tab right out of the key switch. Uh, trick is just to get a flat bladed screwdriver. Like I said, these little 
connectors are really tight. There we go. So that's your cover. So there's the little hose from the primer bulb. And then you've got your switch from your key and from your on off switch. Um, in case you're wondering, the, uh, the wires went to these two, not the outside ones. I'm sure it's the same. I guess we could hook it up to the meter and find out if those are both on and off in the same direction. So now that we've got that off, we've got another cover to remove. Like I said, they don't make it easy to get to. Don't really have to worry about getting these screws mixed up because they're they're not black like the other eight. So I'll just put that on the cover as well. And now there's still covers on here. Now one thing with most snow blowers, they don't have air cleaners. As you can see, we can see right inside the carburetor. There's our choke and throttle is here, high and low. I should also mention that this uses a four quadrant um, throttle dial. So, you know, you can put it on backwards, but it just won't line up with the indicator on the, on the cowling. So, and the, uh, the choke knob, it'll, it'll only, it can fit on either way. It doesn't matter when you're putting it back together. So anyways, to get this off, we've got to take these two extensions And these extensions also hold the carburetor for the engine case. So now this will come out. This little, uh, I guess it's a hood, so nothing can drop down into there. And we'll get that out. I've got to get some pliers just to pinch that to get that off, or you could just leave it. Now, the carburetor is loose. This is a fairly new machine. It's only this will be its I think fourth winter, yeah. But um, we may need to replace the gasket, um, but it looks like it's coming out okay. I'm just going to zoom into the uh, push rods here so you can see what has to come off there, and we have to disconnect the fuel line. So we want to close the fuel valve. I'm taking the fuel line off. Actually, let's take this cover off. Pinch that little plastic tree there. Get that harness out of the way. And take this clamp off. Just move it up. Twist the hose. There's still fuel in the hose line, so it might pour out a little bit. Tap that off. Suppose you could pinch the hose with a pair of vice grips or something, but don't really like doing that. Okay, so here's our throttles, throttle arm. There's an anti-slack spring here, which was the issue with that lawnmower, or that riding mower I had this summer. Play develops in here, and that spring takes up the play, so it can't hunt, and then we just have to pull that plastic, snap that plastic off of this rod, and it'll just lift out. Very similar to an RC airplane uh, linkage. Now this should just pull off. Of course, you want uh, you want to be in a clean environment here, and there's the gasket still in good shape. And we'll take this over to the bench and uh, clean her out. Ooh, one more thing I thought of. I was actually think I'm surprised there's no uh, um, fuel filter here. So I was thinking I could put one in, but I don't think there's enough space. It'd be tight to put an inline fuel filter in here. You know, the big one certainly wouldn't work. This little one might, but yeah, it's so covered up. But boy, if if the reason this thing's if the reason it's uh, it's running lean is just because it's plugged with a bit of dirt, you know, it might be worthwhile putting it in. I don't know.
that would be your call. Thought I'd just show this. Um, as you can see, there's no adjustments on it. This is the idle speed adjustment, so I shouldn't say there's no adjustment. There is an idle speed. That's what the throttle uh, arm rests against. Um, but what we want to get into is what's inside the float. And this is how you'd clean these out. Again, you want to be clean. Uh, no dirt anywhere. This thing's filled with fuel right now, so you want to drain that out. There's two, uh, two bolts on the bottom. I should mention all those bolts I took out, I just used a 10 millimeter, and these are 10 millimeters as well. So I'm just going to loosen this up and I'm going to drain it into a uh, leaking out of the intake here. So you can see, as soon as I take this out, it's going to leak. So I'm just going to get a coffee can here and drain it into that. Get most of that fuel out. So that's the drain. Plug, there's a little gasket on there. It's, uh, it's a plastic gasket, so you probably are okay reusing it. It's not like an aluminum crush washer gasket. And this is what uh, holds the float bowl on. Again, it's got the plastic gasket as well. And you just take, carefully take this off. Now there's a little rubber gasket as well. So this one's still nice and pliable, so it's still good in good shape. Move that off to the side. You can look in the float bowl, and yeah, there's some crud in there. Oh, the, can we focus in there, you rascal? But yeah, you can see some dirt in there, so there's definitely sediment. And as far as the carburetor itself, here's the float for the float bowl. There's a little float needle here. Uh, if we pull this pin out, we can take the float out. It's nice because the little float needle, needling valve is, uh, hopefully that's focusing, but it looks good. So, uh, so that's the float needle, and then inside here is our main jet. I don't know if you can see in there, but you just need a flat-bladed screwdriver. You just unscrew that jet. So, this is the main jet, and yeah, I don't know, it looks like there might be something in it. We'll just clean it out. But uh, that is it right there. And then this other part is called the emulsion tube. Um, tiny little holes in it. Very tiny, so these can get blocked as well. What we'll do is we'll get some carb cleaner out. Or, well, it's called, I've got throttle body cleaner here, but essentially the same thing. And We'll just spray this out. I'm just going to do this away from the camera. Camera lenses and carb cleaner usually don't get along too well. And I've got that sprayed out. I'm just going to take some compressed air here and we'll blow that out. And we'll do the same thing with the jet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see now. I don't know if you can see through that hole any better. Come on, focus. So, there was something in there, definitely. And like I said before, I guess if, if you were still running lean after doing this, you could take a micro drill set and drill that out. I wish I knew what those numbers are. I gotta get my scope out to look at that or a magnifying glass. Hold on. Yeah, so I looked at this under a magnifying glass, and the number on here is 8.8. 8. And then I got my micro drill set out, and I just put, I just fit some drills through there until they wouldn't fit anymore. And what I'm guessing that 8.8 8 is, is 0 0.88 millimeter hole diameter. So I'm thinking that if this is still running lean after cleaning it out, uh, you could go in there and drill that out to... Uh, 0.9 millimeters. Wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're stuck. 
Anyways, so let's get back to cleaning this. I'm going to clean the, uh, I'm going to spray some cleaner through here. That'll clean out the needle, the float needle. Spray some up there into the throttle body. Clean out the throttle body and all that good stuff. Now I'm just going to blow that out, pause it while I do that. So I've just cleaned everything out, um, got the bowl cleaned out, sprayed, you know, cleaned all this out, blew it out with uh, clean compressed air. So everything just goes back in the reverse order. The well, first thing we do is the emulsion tube. Again, cleanliness, very important. You don't want to get all those little holes, any of those holes plugged. And the low pressure area in there draws the fuel through it. And then the metering jet. And you just screw that back into position. And you don't have to screw it in really tight, you want it snug. Okay. And then we'll put the float needle back in. Just slide the float bowl down. And then we'll get the float bowl pin, pivot pin. Make sure that's moving nice and freely. Just get that pin centered. So when you put the float bowl on, the float bowl is what keeps that pin from coming out. Uh, we'll get the gasket, put it in. Getting that little bowl gasket on was uh, was not was the hardest thing of this uh, whole process so far. Uh, looks like it'll only fit one way. It's got a little lip on the top. It presses against the bowl. That's the side you want facing up. If it faces down, these little uh, there's three little detents on this gasket that hold it into the carburetor housing. And at least that's what I was finding. So this bowl can go on in two directions. There's these two locating tabs on either side. They're both the same. They go into these location notches on the float on the carb housing. Um, if you recall, call the carburetor sat in the snowblower, uh, the muffler was back here. This is the outside of the snowblower. So you want the drain on this side. So we want that locating tab up in there. Okay, just make sure it's sitting flush all the way around. That way you know the gasket hasn't popped out. And now we'll put the retaining, the bowl retaining bolt back in. and then the drain bolt. Okay, I'm just going to remount everything back on the uh, blower and then we'll go outside and see if it actually runs. Actually, I thought uh, we'll just start it up uh, with everything off, with all the covers still off. Um, oh, better hook the old Sparky plug back up. Things generally don't run without a spark plug. I've just temporarily put those uh, spacer bolts or spacer nuts back on uh, just to hold the carb on. We've refit the fuel tube uh, or the fuel line. I'm still debating whether or not to put an inline fuel filter in here. Uh, I think there's enough room if I use that small one, but will it just cause more problems? I don't know. Uh, fuel valves open. Turn the choke. It's turned to high. Okay, let's see what happens. your idle if you wanted to. Seems a little low. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to 
shut it off, you can just short either of these out. There, so um, hopefully if that'll help anyone, if you've got a surging LCT engines and you know it's uh, surging because it's running lean, you confirmed it by closing your choke, it got better. Um, that's how you take the carb off and clean it out. Very simple carb to work on really. Uh, like I said, the hardest part for me was getting that uh, damn float bowl gasket back in place. Anyways, cheers folks. Uh, happy snow blowing.